Well, good morning. We are here for our Wednesday morning Bible study. And for those of you who don't know, I am Dr. Will Wheat. Uh, today we're going to do uh, the lessons that the Holy Spirit teaches. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit's lessons that he teaches, or the Holy Spirit teach something like that. It's what the Holy Spirit teaches is basically what we're going to talk about. For the uh, members of the New Christ Christian Faith Center, this will be a review, <coughs> kind of, and a reminder of some things that we talked about uh, for the first time. For those of you that's joining me by uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook, this may be the first time that you heard this presentation. Now, uh, from the offset, we use the, the Bible, which is, has different authors uh, from different periods of time uh, through many, many, many years. These books have been put together and made into a Bible. And we as ministers and lay people, we go to the Bible and we treat the Bible as the Word of God, and we quote it, and we allow the words in the Bible to have some construct in how we construct our lives, some input into how we construct our lives, I should say. And uh, many of us are led by the words in the Bible based on our interpretation of what we're reading. Well, I, I shared with our congregation, I've shared online before, that once I discovered A Course in Miracles and Dr. Helen Shookman's um, uh, scribing the word of Jesus Christ, I literally took that as authentic word from Jesus Christ based on her background and her relationship to religion and her belief in God, or non-belief in God, and how it, w it came to her as a surprise. And she just wrote down what the voice of Christ was saying to her. And a lot of times in reading her writing, she's writing as he's speaking, so it's, it's a lot of times it's in the first person. But the reason that I, that I put a lot of confidence in it, because all of the Bible is a, re, uh, is a repeat, is a copy of the original. And the original speakers and authors of those books in the Bible are far removed. And students over hundreds of years, just not one year, two years, over hundreds of years, students reciting what their teacher taught them, what their teacher uh, uh, what their teacher, when stu a student learned from their teacher, back, 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 and they entitled it uh, a particular book from a particular th teacher and a particular thought, but it wasn't concrete. It wasn't the autobiography or the biography of the writer of that book that we call scripture. So there are some things in there that are not reliable. For me, what Dr. Helen Schiffman wrote in A Course of Miracles is more reliable, more to the to the point that I believe that Jesus Christ is speaking to all the earth, to all of humanity. And now when I read uh, the Course of Miracles or A Course in Miracles, the scriptures make more sense to me. They have a, a more clearer interpretation. So that's why I, I take that delivery. That's why I've come to the conclusion that I've been sharing uh, over these past five years. So anyway, today we're gonna. I'm gonna read some. Some. Um, it's like we go to the Bible and read directly from the Bible. I'm gonna go to a Course in Miracles and read directly from a particular chapter in the Course of Miracles, and uh, this is particular chapter six and part five of that chapter. And so it says the lessons of the Holy Spirit, and I'm gonna just read a little bit and make some comments on that, so that we can all come together in what God is saying to us today in these next uh, few minutes, like. Any good teacher, the Holy Spirit knows more than you do now. But he teaches only to make you equal with him. He's not trying to show the distance between you and he. He's teaching to make you equal to him. You had already taught yourself wrongly, having believed what was not true. You did not believe in your own perfection. Would God teach you that you had made a split mind when he knows your mind only was hold? What God does know is that his communication channels are not open to him, so what he cannot impart, I'm sorry, so that he cannot impart his joy and know that his children are wholly joyous. His joy is an ongoing process not in time, but in eternity. God's extending outward, though not his completeness, is blocked. When he, uh, the sonship does not communicate with him as one, 
So he, so, so he thought, my children sleep and must be awakened. How can you wake children in a more kindly way than by a gentle voice that will not frighten them, but will merely remind them that the night is over and the light has come? You do not inform them that the nightmares that frighten them so badly are not real because children believe in magic. You merely reassure them that they are safe now. Then you train them to rec recognize the difference between sleeping and awakening, so they will understand they need not be afraid of dreams. And so when bad dreams come, they will themselves call on the light to dispel them. A wise teacher teaches through approach, not uh, avoidance. He does not emphasize what you must avoid to escape from harm, but what you need to learn to have joy. He doesn't teach you what you must avoid. He doesn't teach through avoidance, avoid this, avoid that. No, that's not how he teaches. He just emphasizes uh, um, how you... Oh, I'm sorry, he must emphasize that you must learn how to have joy. Because once you, because joy is different and opposite than trouble and chaos. So I won't deal with that portion. I just deal with how to have joy. And in having joy, you totally eliminate any opportunity to experience any kind of violence or chaos. Consider the fear and confusion a child would experience if he were told do, do not do this because it will hurt you and make you unsafe. But if you do that instead, you will escape from harm and be safe. And then you will not be afraid. It is surely better to use only three words. Do only that. This simple statement is perfectly clear, easily understood, and very easily remembered. The Holy Spirit never itemizes errors because he does not frighten children, and those who lack wisdom are children. I want to read that again. The Holy Spirit never itemizes errors because he does not frighten children, and those who lack wisdom are children. So if somebody is itemizing all your wrongs, and telling you how you haven't measured up, and they, and they bring in your, your consciousness to your failures, that inspiration, that teaching, is not inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's not how he teaches. He wants to remind you that it is, it is absolutely ridiculous and insane for you to believe in the impossible. But if you believe in the impossible, then you, the impossible will be possible for you in your life. It is impossible for perfection to find error, or to make error, or to create error. But if you believe in that, then you will make that possible. But that's, but he's not going to, he's not going to come in and, and and correct you harshly or correct you rudely. He's going to use what you give him to lead you out of that belief system into the system of truth and reality, you are created perfect by God, okay? That's one of the reasons I believe that, that the scriptures record that love, which is the law of God, cover a multitude of faults. It doesn't expose it, it just covers it, and it keeps on encouraging you to remember your perfection that's inside of you because you came from God, who is perfect, all right? Now watch this. Uh, uh, this uh, he does not frighten children, and those who lack wisdom are children. Yet he always answers their call, and his uh, dependability makes them more certain. Children do confuse fantasy and reality, and they are frightened because they do not recognize the difference. The Holy Spirit makes no distinction among dreams. He merely shines them away. His light is always the call to awaken. 
whatever you have been dreaming, I'm sorry, whatever you have been dreaming, nothing lasting lies in dreams. And the Holy Spirit shining with the light from God himself speaks only of what lasts forever. Wow. Now watch this. Now we're going to get into a thought system that will bring us into what I call spiritual and personal prosperity. Because one of the things, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of programs going on now that, that has to do with giving and they're they, 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 they forming a platform where you are, are a strategy where you can give gifts to one another and become your own bank and prosper. And that's good. If there was if there was a challenge with if I saw a challenge there, is is it created from the motivation of love or is it created from the motivation of greed? Because anything that's formed from that is loveless will not last. Anything that's birthed from love has an eternal uh, reward that goes with it, and it just increases. It doesn't decrease. Because it just multiplies, because it's an extension of itself to others, and it teaches others not that they can create the person that extends to them, but they can also be extensions themselves, which grows the kingdom of God. So that's how God grows his kingdom by extending himself to others, and then those others extend themselves uh, to others. And the, the increase comes from giving. So there's three things that we want to remind you of that will cause you to increase and things to go well with you in your life. This is called to have, give all to all. To have, give all to all. Paul, I believe it's Paul in Acts says, uh, of course Christ is saying, it is more blessed to give than receive. It's more blessed to give than receive. <clears throat> when I first heard that, I didn't understand the logic of that. But to receive, if you're, if you're receiving something, there has to be, be some agreement with lack with you. I mean, like, or empty or some type of void in your life. I need to receive this. I, I'm la I don't, and if I'm giving it sacrificial, that means you're, every time you give, you're diminishing in what you are. Your substance is diminishing. It's not growing. And this world system says if you don't have a, a two-way street going and coming, then you're going to be deficient and you're going to be broke if you just give. But the kingdom of God is not built on this world system nor its strategy or its interpretations. Because in the kingdom of God, the way the laws of the kingdom work, which is love, to give, you're going to give, you're going to, you, to have, you're going to give all to all. So let's listen to this teaching and this thought. When your body and your ego and your dreams are gone, you will know that you will last forever. Perhaps you think this is accomplished through death, but nothing is accomplished through death because death is nothing. Everything is accomplished through life and life is of the mind and in the mind. The body neither lives nor dies because it cannot contain you who are life. If you were the same mind, you can overcome death because I did. Death is an attempt to resolve conflict by not deciding at all. Like any other impossible solution, the ego attempts, it will not work. I'm sorry, let's read that again. Like any other impossible, not possible, like any other impossible solution, the ego attempts, it will not work. God did not make the body because it is destructible and therefore not of the kingdom. I like to say, <laughs> so a lot of people are confused that, oh, God made this body. Not this body, not the body that we live in that is destructible. God did not make it. Why? Because it is destructible and it's not of the kingdom. So God did not make this body. The body is the symbol of what you think you are. 
It is clearly a separation device and therefore does not exist. The Holy Spirit, as always, takes what you have made and translates it into a learning device. Again, as always, he reinterprets what the ego uses as an argument for separation into a demonstration against it. If the mind can heal the body, but the body cannot heal the mind, then the mind must be stronger than the body. Every miracle demonstrates this. I have said that the Holy Spirit is the motivation for miracles. He always tells you that only the mind is real because only the mind can be shared. The body is separate and therefore cannot be part of you. To be of one mind is meaningful, but to be one body is meaningless. By the laws of mind, then the body is meaningless. To the Holy Spirit, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. This is similar, uh, familiar enough to you by now, but it has not yet become believable. Therefore, you do not understand it and cannot use it. We have too much to accomplish on behalf of the kingdom to let this crucial concept slip away. It is a real foundation stone of the thought system I teach and what you and I want you to teach. You cannot perform miracles without believing it because it is a belief in perfect equality. Only one equal gift can be offered to the equal sons of God. And that is full appreciation. Nothing more and nothing less. Without a range, order of difficulty is meaningless. And there must be no range in what you offer to your brother. You can't put any limits. You can't say, well, you have to do this. And God is only going to take you this far because you are this and that. No, you believe and know whom you're talking to. And you believe and know who they are. And from the point of your understanding and certainty about the person whom you're speaking to, praying for, and healing, not their faith, but your knowing and your certainty of God's consistency and how his sons are perfect and complete begin to demand the reality of the truth manifest in their life. Invade, if you were, their dream of destruction. Gently bring them from their nightmare into light because what they're dreaming of, what they limit themselves to, is not real for them. And you understand that. There's something you're going to also learn, that you're going to learn peace by teaching it. So when you teach and share, you teach and share what you are. You become what you say. You become what you teach. So it's good to talk about miracles, to teach about miracles, to teach that there's no difficulty in miracles because God then measure out a little bit for you and a little bit for them. No, God has blessed you with all you need. Whatever circumstance that you enter into, physical, mental, financial, in this dream that you're having, you can change this nightmare into a fairy tale if you want to. You can change it into the reality to reflect the reality of your connection with God that has never been broken. We forget that we originally were the thought of God. God thought every person walking this planet, they originated in the mind of God. They are the thought that came from God. And, your th and the thought that comes from your mind is never far from you. So that means that every person is never far from the mind of God because they were birthed in his mind. And seeing that is true and seeing that he is perfect and he can only create after himself and he can't deny himself in any of us. He can't deny your wholeness. He cannot deny your completion and your perfection. And so when, you, when you're praying, the Holy Spirit will pray through you and you offer the Holy Spirit as a 
gift to those you're praying for. You just, and not that they don't have him, but you offer him, you remind them that in you is the spirit of God. And seeing that the spirit of life that's in me, that was in Christ, that raised him from the dead, is in you, this spirit that is of God and filled with nothing but life quickens and makes alive the body. The body is neither sick, nor does it die. It is by the Spirit of God. And when you are one with the Spirit of God and one with your true identity, then that begins to bring forth fruit in your body. So this is important for all of us to get. All of us have to renew our minds and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we learn how to translate our relationship and what we think we're going through differently. All things work together for good. Why? Because we are our own masters. We have a guide, but we don't have a commander. We are our own commander. We are our own, we, we follow our own commands and our own dictate, and the Spirit of God is there to guide us. So if we follow our guide, then we can command that the correction be made in our lives and in the lives of those we love. And when we extend ourselves, we give ourselves, and we extend God to others, then the kingdom grows and the kingdom of God increases. This is how we do this. So we, to do this, we have to give what we have and we increase by giving all that we have to all. That's how you gain. That's how you increase. Amen? All right. Uh, let's read on. Let me read this a little bit further. Perhaps you think that fear as well as love can communicate can be communicated, and therefore can be shared. Yet this is not so real as it may appear. Those you communicate fear are promoting attack. Those who communicate fear are promoting attack. And attack always breaks communication, making it impossible. Egos do join together in temporary alliances but always for what each one can get separately. The Holy Spirit communicates only what each one can give to all. He never takes anything back because he wants you to keep it. Therefore, his teaching begins with the lesson to have, give all to all. His teaching begins with the lesson to have, give all to all. This is a very preliminary step and the only one you must take for yourself. It is not even necessary that you complete the step yourself, but it is necessary that you turn in that direction. Having chosen to go that way, you place yourself in charge of the journey where you and only you must remain. This step may appear to accelerate uh, okay, conflict rather than resolve it because it is the beginning step in reversing your perception and turning it right side up. Wow. This conflicts with the upside down perception you have not yet abandoned or the change in direction would not have been necessary. Some remain at this step for a long time, experiencing very acute conflict. At this point, they may try to accept the conflict rather than take the step, the next step towards its resolution. Having taken the first step, however, they will be helped once they have chosen what they cannot complete alone. They are no longer alone. Wow, once you take this step, you, are, you will recognize, I am no longer doing this by myself. I have a companion. I have a guide that will never guide, that will never forsake me nor leave me. I am not alone. I am moving in the right step. Even though conflict comes, because I've, I've changed my mind, I changed my direction. I have already overcome this conflict because I'm already going and moving away from what caused the conflict in the first place. Praise God. 
hopefully this was a good reminder for those of you who have heard this. For those of you who are hearing this for the first time, I would encourage you, you know, go back because we're going to place this on YouTube. We've been attempting to, to, to simulcast Facebook and YouTube and we haven't yet worked those, uh, those things out yet. But go back. Okay, find it on, face, on, on, on Facebook. Go to YouTube. Go to my channel, Will Wheat. Uh, three on, on YouTube and find it because we're going to re-air, we're going to repost it later on in the daytime and listen to it again. This is very important. That's why I'm taking my time. I'm trying to remove my emotion and my excitement and kind of be deliberate in my teaching on this. And I decided to read directly from the book. You know, um, we all don't have the same interpretation, but I want you to have the understanding that God has placed in my heart for you in this moment, in this time. This is right for now. This is right for now. The pandemic, the, the COVID-19 that's out there, you being um, um, uh, uh, confined to your home. Uh, some of you have, have, uh, been, have lost your jobs. Some of you have known people who have gone to the hospital. Some of you have contracted the COVID-19 uh, and you don't know how to pray for the person, that for yourself or for the person that you know about it. Fear has gripped you thinking that they're going to die. But once you understand, death doesn't exist. It's just, it's life. In coming, the body, the baby is going from life to life. In departing from the body, the, the, the person is going from life to life. There's no death. It does not exist. It does not exist. And when you stop fearing it, then the life, the law of life that's in you can be extended and given to the person that you're praying for and miracles will happen in their bodies because your mind can heal the body but the body can't heal the mind which so the mind is greater than the body and your belief in life and health and well-being is so great that it influences the person that you're praying for without fear, without doubt but pray with certainty and knowing Knowing that there's no loss, even if they close their eyes, they don't lose. Your prayer is answered. They are no longer ill. They are no longer sick. They are no longer suffering. In this world, or in, in the extended life, they don't suffer no longer. And that's your conclusion. But you also conclude that they will live in this world long enough to bear witness of the faithfulness of God and His healing in their body as another light and an extension to other people who live in this world with them. So I just want to keep you encouraged, keep you focused, and really extend this love that God has given to you today. Don't fear. Don't worry. Cast everything to Him. Acknowledge Him. He is your life. He is your source. He is your source for everything that comes to your mind. He is the answer. And there's only one. You are the child of God. And God has supplied all your need. You are the child of God. And God has supplied your need. You're not a body. You are still free because you as God has, has created you. You're not a body, you're free. You, you remain as God has created you. God has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. You're always on God's mind. God loves you and he gently awakening you from this nightmare that we call life, from this system, this egoic system that we call life. He's gently awakening us to his truth and his reality. Hear this, these gentle words and awaken into his truth and begin to allow that truth to have substance in your everyday existence. Well, I want, I want to re remind you that God has plans for your life and none of those plans include defeat. Until Sunday, be blessed.